Okay, we'll start Revit 2016 here. We'll do a simple project. A forest story building. So uh, you can apply this to your project, be it CAD or uh, Revit project. When we get the first screen of Revit, uh, you probably used to go to architect architectural template but in our uh, course will do a structural template. If you don't see the structural template on your first screen, you need to go to options and add this one. So we'll start with structural template here. And we'll build a simple project, uh, assuming for story building. So to do that, first of all, we need to be on structures. And I need to start with levels. To be on levels because the default is on level two i have to be on the elevations to access the levels so i will go with the east and by default i have only two uh, level one and level two and uh, let's assume that you want to make some changes to level two the height is three thousand let's make it four thousand five hundred millimeters <laughs> then you get this and after that, I would like to add more levels, two more levels. So back to structures here. And go see the levels active now. Click on levels. You have the choice of to draw or to pick a line. So I'll click on the pick a line. And uh, I'll use the offset. So I'll use 3,000 millimeters offset. Hit enter. And then once you get close to the level, it will automatically show you that. Click accept it. Same thing goes for this. So two times escape and you are good. So you have these four levels. Now I need to go back to level two to start to work on the grid. So you see the grid, the grid is active. Click on a grid. We'll have the first grid here. And then two times escape. Again, I will use uh, go structures and the grids. And I will use pick line and I'll use offset so I'll use 4000 millimeters hit enter in this direction 4000 and 4000 and 4000 four rows two times escape I'll do the other direction uh, I'll have from here to here and I'll have two times escape to modify this make it A and then same thing go back to structures grids and pick lines and make the offset let's make the offset 7500 7500 millimeters enter so we'll have three of them here so on this side one two three two times escape so i'm good so far let me just adjust this elevation this one here get this one here and get this one here also <coughs> and you can if you want you can adjust the the views here again see this one can drag this a bit here and for north you can again do the same thing drag this a bit here south and west should be fine okay so back to level two So we need first of all to do the columns. So go beyond structure. On structure, you choose column, and by default, you have a bunch of col sections available for you. If you don't like these sections, these are the sections that you suggested based on your companion, uh, studio companion, or whatever tools you are using to give an estimate for the structural elements. If you don't find the sizes here. They need to go to load family. Uh, in my case, I would like to use W200 column. So uh, this will map you to structural columns, then steel. And from steel, you can go down to the metric wide flange. This is metric wide flange columns. And choose the W200, the one that is suitable, or the one that you suggested based on your estimations. So I myself would like to use the W200 by 100. Now it will be the default one. So you can go to each element, each, each 
intersection and do the columns individually and uh, or in my case I don't need to do that I will do them one shot by using the at grid and apply them to the entire intersections of all of these and let me just cancel this to show you something I've, I missed here when you go to columns see it says the depth so we are at level 2 so it goes to level 1 so make sure that this is also reads right now again this is 200 so I'll use the at grid and I will select all the intersections here and if you look closely they are okay uh, if you want to change the orientation then you have to change them before you confirm but in my case it is okay so I'll click finish if you go to the 3d you should be able to see all of this so two times escape you are out of the order of columns these are your columns back to level 2 so we need to put we are on level 2 we need to put the beams a structure tab beams again you'll have uh, a bunch of options here for you if you don't see the one that you like again you need to go and load family here but I myself I see for the main call main beams which are go this direction I will use the 310 which is the default here and when I do that I'll do the one B at a time click here and get to the midpoint click midpoint click and then midpoint click escape and then start here midpoint 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 escape midpoint 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 escape and then midpoint 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 and here is midpoint escape so if you look at 3d seem to be fine back to the level 2 I need to put the secondary beams here so again go to structure beams now I don't want to use 310 I would use I would like to use 100 100 I have this beam which is 100 by 19 click on that one and again do the same thing so I'll click here sorry here 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 so you repeat escape and then you go here take your time because it's important otherwise you will have problem when you export this to Autodesk robot so it is worth taking the time here rather than going back and forth and and getting confused about what the problem is because there might be some in, in, disconnect point might give you problem so back to 3d and see how it looks like so we seem to be fine here now if you get closer you see these colored lines these are represent the analytical so if you don't want to see them at this point in time you can just click on hide analytical po uh, model and if you want to see more material to it go to visual style wireframe make it shaded then you see these are the main beams this is the beam and this is the secondary beams the secondary beam this is the main beam so let's go to level two we are done with the beams and columns so we need to do concrete floor <coughs> gain on structure and go to floors and floor structures you see you have again a bunch of floors concrete floors steel decks concrete steel decks i'll use generic uh, concrete i will use 200 millimeter concrete so i'll edit this i'll duplicate i'll not overwrite so i'll make a slab of 200 millimeters and then i go change the properties go edit again and the category here this is should be concrete so i will go type conk here and you get co co concrete cast in place these are the strength of concrete 20 mega, mega pascal 25 30 and so on so i'll use 30 and say okay so i have the concrete as a material and thickness you need to change this to 200 otherwise it will be 300 and click ok and ok so you'll have by default slab 200 to do the slab you have method to draw your slab you have all of these you can draw lines i can do 
rectangle or any shape or if it is not straight line you can use the curves also or you can use pick walls which I don't have any here or you can use pick supports which is I which, uh, what I intend to do so click on it and then this is the first support this is second support and I will do this one to be able to trim them so it will be complete I'll go to trim so this and this will join this and this will join and if you like it click on confirm so it's as far as it doesn't give you an error so it means your concrete slab is okay now the only problem here is that this concrete slab top level is same as the top level of the steel beam which is not right so you need to raise the concrete slab above the steel beam and you raise it by the amount of thickness of the concrete slab my concrete slab was 200 so go to the property which says height offset from 200 millimeter will be because the units are millimeters so it will be 200 millimeters so once you move here it will be to double check that go to east or west and see that this slab is sitting on top of the steel beam so back to level two so now that i have all of these column beam and concrete slab done I need to go to the analytical view and start to put the supports and the loads on the top of the concrete slab so to do that you need to click on the analyze tab analyze tab then you go to boundary condition that is for the supports and when you go to the boundary condition you have point support line support point will be for columns line will be for walls bearing walls or shafts elevator shafts and areas for footing which is beyond the scope of this course so the two things that you need to focus on is point and line and you see it is fixed by default so i will use fix if you don't like fix or if you need to do pin or roller it's up to you but fix will be the one that i'll be using so fixed and this is fixed and click on these ends of columns then you should get them so once I get the supports and loading on this analytical model, it will be ready to be exported to uh, Autodesk Robot Structure Analysis. So let's get this done. After that, we'll move to to the structure analysis. So escape, escape, then back again to this is. Now I need to do first of all the load cases so i need to load the i need go to load cases i don't need here the the seismic in my sample i don't need the temperature i don't need the accidental i don't need this i don't need the snow but you might need the snow later on i don't need the wind these are what i want the load combination you need to create this first is the is the ultimate call it ultimate ultimate one and and do add add so you have one dead load one live load so change dead to and live and we will do the dead 1.25 and we'll do the live 1.5 and we'll call this ultimate then add another one and add add We'll call this uh, working and and with one dead one live load and the serviceability so this is what we need uh, click OK now we need to load this uh, concrete slabs So we'll go to loads and from loads you'll see this menu you'll see hosted area load hosted line load hosted point load area load the hosted is if you put a load on certain area and then after that you go and change the area the load will follow the area but if it is just area without hosted area then it will stay on that one so if you have five by five slab and you put the use this type then the 5 will 5 will be there. If you change the slab to 7 by 7, the only 5 by 5 area will be loaded. But if you have hosted, which you will be using, then if you change, it will change also with it. Load will change also with it. 
so here I have by default dead load so dead load says it is minus one in the in Z direction so I'll make it three minus three so it's right ready to be applied so click on it it is loaded now and then the other load is be live load click on here and then choose live load and make the live load uh, five minus five Z direction and add it to the so here we go so we have click escape escape then we have the our nautical model is is complete support and those and everything so now it is ready to be exported to robot click on robot and there is robot link analysis let's go by default send model only and click on ok so it will start to export it to to robot and assuming that you have robot in your machine if, if you don't have robot in your machine you will not see the icon of linking at all so just make sure that you have a robot it might take some time based on the complexity of your project so we say no then it will open this project in in robot so there's robot in robot we need to do analysis which is called calculations and after that we see uh, they will do the design so let's run the analysis and if you'll be successful here without errors then it means that your model is good so ours is good seems to be I don't need to see calculation mode the finite element this is for meshing you don't want to see this one so I click on it, it will disappear now now that we did the analysis you can check the bending moment and shear uh, diagram from results if you want to you can click on result and diagram bars here and um, if you want to see for example uh, bending moments in the y direction and uh, we'd like to see the values text and then max and minimum and filled apply so it shows you all the values and uh, if we remove them all close so we need to do check the the sizes of the section click on um, steel design and then steel aluminum design we are in the design so it will run the design it will design and see if the sizes that you suggested are correct click on results and anything green means you are okay it passed if it is red then it means it didn't pass it should be changed so here we go all of them passed and these are the sizes the ratio means this this section for example it, it it utilized only 20 20 percent of the size so the size is oversized this is utilized only 30 percent and so on and so forth so you can change this if you want to but you need to group your uh, sections and we will talk about this at a later session